Let's imagine we're looking at the orbit of a, of a planet around uh, the center of its orbit. And the center of the orbit is shown by that x. Um, so this might be the planet right here at this point in its orbit. Just imagine that. This could be Jupiter orbiting around our sun. This could be uh, some distant exoplanet orbiting around its own star. One thing that people are not aware of is that the central star, the sun in our case of our solar system, or the central star in the case of an exoplanet, also has its own, own motion. And we're going to show that by a little bitty circle that represents the orbit of the, of the sun or the star going around the center of the orbit of both of them. So, and that's important to see. We, and that means if uh, the planet is at this place in its orbit right here where I've shown it, the sun or the central star must be at the opposite place in its orbit. So you could draw a straight line from the sun across the center to the star and you'd always have that straight line. If, if the planet moves in its orbit a certain distance, like suppose the planet goes on up to a place right here, that would mean that the central star would move to a place here. So you've got the same straight line from the sun through the x over to the, uh, to the planet. So by the time the planet has con continued around, gotten to this place in its orbit, the sun has gone to a place right there in its orbit, or the, the central star. So let's imagine that we're looking at this. We're an observer. We're over here, and, and uh, we're watching with our telescope. And um, we can see this, this uh, system. But of course, what we don't see is the planet. Remember how dim a planet is compared to its central star. An analogy that uh, is probably a pretty accurate analogy would be if you want to observe a star that has a planet, um, and you, you watch it from North Carolina, for example. You build a telescope, you go to Mount Mitchell. The planet, the uh, star and its planet are off in San Francisco somewhere. The star is represented by a, one of those incredibly bright searchlights that sometimes you see when a new store opens or a new gas station. And the planet is represented by a mosquito or a fly that is, uh, doesn't produce any light of its own. Whatever, if you're going to see it, you're going to only see it with re light reflected off of it from the central star. And that planet out in San Francisco is a, a fly that's orbiting around the uh, vicinity of the beam of light coming from this incredible searchlight. So the searchlight is what you really see. You don't see any light from the planet. So in this system, the planet that I'm showing by the large circle is not visible to us. We don't see it at all. But what we do see is the central motion of the star around here. And we measure that by its radial velocity. And you just have to remember what radial velocity is. That's the line of sight from the star to the observer. This is the line of sight. And uh, the, it's the motion along the line of sight. So if the uh, star is right here in its orbit, the planet, of course, is over here. Um, if the star is right there, it would have a radial velocity toward us in the way I've been drawing it. If the star is right here, it's got only a velocity across our line of sight. And if we're measuring the radial velocity of the star, we simply wouldn't see it. It would be look, look like it was not moving at all. If the star is at this position in its orbit, it's going to have a radial velocity away from us, again, along a line of sight. So what we would see would be the, the star, let's just say it starts over here at the, at the back position, no motion, and then we'd start, start to see a radial velocity coming toward us. We call that a negative radial velocity. When it gets to this point in its orbit, we would say it has no radial velocity. When it gets here, it's got a positive radial velocity at a maximum value moving away from us. So if we were to make a graph of what that would look like, the graph might be uh, something like this. This horizontal axis is going to represent time in this direction, and um, the vertical direction is going to represent the radial velocity. I'll call that v sub r. So this might be 0 along here. This would be a positive radial velocity going away from us. This would be a negative radial velocity going toward us. So we might see something that looks like this. This would represent the central star moving toward us. When it gets to this point in its radial velocity curve, it has a radial velocity of 0. We'd say that it was uh, crossing our line of sight, so it would be right here. 
as it gets to its maximum positive radial velocity at this point, it would be moving away from us at its, at its maximum right there. As it gets to zero right here, we say that it was the back part of its orbit moving across our line of sight with a radial velocity of zero. Now, it's worthwhile to think about what it would look like if the graph looked a little different. So, for example, we could have an, a graph that would also have that kind of wobbly shape like that. But the maxima and the minima would be much closer together. So, for example, in our first example, this time interval between there and there would represent one period. That would be... Um, from the moment that the star is in this position until it goes around and comes back to that same position. And maybe that's uh, 20 days, the way I've drawn it. Okay, If we look at this situation, clearly those maxima are much closer together. Just to make up an example, maybe that's four days. And how, what would that look like? Well, we'd see this central star wobbling around and around and around much faster in this situation and much slower in this situation.